Coming up on the news at noon, the monumental move facing a fiscal blow. Details on the bu budget battleground, plus what's next for that proposal. And we are finally starting to dry out across the DMV. How long does this dry period last? We'll have a full look at your forecast coming up in just a bit. And later, the State of the Union tonight. We're previewing the presidential address as the nation prepares to tune in for Biden's roadmap for the years ahead. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good Thursday afternoon. Thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Tosin Fakile in for Mark Hall. Let's get right on over to the Weather Center to talk about your weather today. Meteorologist Damon Matson joining us for that. And Damon, I'll take this weather. The sun's out. It doesn't feel as cold. There's no rain. I mean, does it get any better? I mean, not really. And Tosin, you've been joining us on these drier days. I see what you're <laughs> on to. That is planned. Get to, talk to, to get to talk about the drier weather for sure. But yes, folks, finally, after a very soggy Wednesday, the sun is starting to return across the region as we dry out. Moving on toward the end of the week here. Check it out. Rainfall totals from yesterday were not all that impressive. We honestly saw less than a quarter of an inch across most of the DMV, but it was just that consistent light drizzle, the mist, the fog that made for not quite a great day out there to say the least on your Wednesday and we had those lighter rainfall totals for the most part out there but when you went east of the I-95 corridor toward the eastern shore that's where the center of that last storm system was located and that's where we had some of the steadier rainfall and thus the higher totals from the last couple of days and there goes that latest storm system it's pulling away well off to our north and east taking any bit of rainfall along with it and looking out there right now it is starting to clear out. We certainly do still have some clouds passing on by, but for the most part we are looking at more sunshine finally breaking out and that's going to have an impact for the rest of the day here. Temperatures will respond accordingly. We will make it well into the 60s. It's going to be a fantastic Thursday as we roll on through here these next several hours. Now we're not done though with this unsettled weather. When is our next bout of rain? Rain going to arrive. We'll have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. We'll soak all that in for today. 1202 any minute now. Full details about the Virginia state budget will be released. The highlight of the budget being Governor Glenn Youngkin's plan to move the Capital One Arena from Chinatown to Alexandria, and that's being put on ice. Lawmakers saying they will not fund a new arena this fiscal year. DC News Now's Candace Cole has the details. According to the Post, the Virginia Senate Finance Committee will not include plans to erect a new arena as part of its budget that's due out this afternoon. That's all happening as Monumental, the company that owns Capital One Arena, has been in an ongoing dispute with D.C. over ending its land use agreement early. In a post on X last night, Virginia Senate Finance and Appropriations Chairwoman Louise Lucas posted a meme of herself at a tombstone, essentially saying RIP to the quote $5 billion arena deal, although backers say the cost is actually around $2 billion. Now, Yunkin will have to submit an amendment or a standalone bill for Virginia lawmakers to consider during a future session to try and save his arena plans. That's unless there's a last minute reversal on this before the General Assembly adjourned Saturday. But Virginia House Speaker Democrat Don Scott hinted that there may still be hope for the deal. He told the Post, quote, there have been several conversations back and forth. It's not final until it's final. This all unfolded as the city of Alexandria sought last night to engage concerned residents who've been skeptical about the plans to build a new entertainment district in the area, which would include the proposed arena for the Wizards and the Capitals during a pop-up event at Potomac Yard Metro Station. Residents we spoke with say they're happy the arena won't be included in the budget. I was jumping for joy this morning when I heard that news. Yeah, I was excited initially until I looked at the plans and, and what all it would entail, meaning, you know, more traffic, less transportation, and, you know, obviously trash, crime. It belongs to D.C., so I prefer it stays there. And the Post also reports that an unbinding agreement has been reached that would allow the Washington Wizards and the Capitals to leave downtown D.C. by 2028. Reporting in Alexandria, Candace Cole, D.C. News Now. 
Candace, thank you. And staying in Virginia, Fairfax Bus Connector service will resume tomorrow. This comes after a deal was reached between Fairfax Connector union workers and TransDev, ending the 13-day strike. Fairfax Connector released a statement yesterday apologizing to customers for the inconvenience. And the workers union is calling the new contract a win. They say it guarantees retirement security, competitive wages, and many other priorities. All right, let's take a live look right now at the Capitol this afternoon, and that is where President Biden tonight will deliver his State of the Union address to the American people and a divided Congress just months before the next presidential election. National correspondent Rashad Hudson joins us now with a look at that speech. During his State of the Union address tonight, President Biden is looking to build a case for his reelection in November, where he is expected to face a heated challenge from former President Trump. Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. Tonight, under the lights of the House chamber, President Biden will deliver his annual State of the Union address. He will share why he is hopeful about this country's future the White House says the president will talk about his vision for the economy and he'll also focus on mental health and reproductive rights. Protecting women's reproductive health in the face of relentless attacks. The president will be greeted by the new leader of the House, Speaker Mike Johnson, who has been a major critic of the Biden administration. Our economic strength is in decline. Everyday goods are more expensive. People can barely uh, afford the cost of living now. Ohio Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown says he wants the president to talk about lowering costs for families. We've done, I think, a good job on keeping the price of insulin at $35. I want to limit the out-of-pocket costs for seniors. We're moving in that way. And after the president speaks tonight, Alabama Senator Katie Britt will give the official Republican response. And former President Trump says he'll be watching tonight and plans to do a play-by-play -play of the speech. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson, back to you. Rashad, thank you. And with today's State of the Union comes road closures in the district. So take a look at your screen. Things to be aware of. This map shows the street around the Capitol that will be closed. The streets marked in green, those close at 6 this morning. The streets marked in yellow, they close at 1 o'clock this afternoon. So in about 45 minutes, the streets marked in red and blue close at 5.30 and 7 p.m. respectively. In Virginia, leaders from Fairfax County looking to transform a community. The county inviting people to learn more about the Centerville planning study, which will help guide the area's future development. This includes plans for housing, parks and transportation. The county is hosting a community meeting one week from today at Center Ridge Elementary School. The public is invited to learn more and give feedback. The meeting starts at 7 p.m. on March 14th. You can sign up on the county's website. And the county says it recognizes the importance of family participation and will provide child care services at that meeting on the 14th. And a former Loudoun County Public School Superintendent Scott Ziegler will face a new trial after his conviction was overturned. DC News Now anchor Corey James has the details. Yesterday, a judge set aside former Loudoun County Public School Superintendent Scott Ziegler's guilty verdict. Now, Gil Ziegler was convicted last year for firing a teacher in retaliation for testifying against him to a grand jury. The misdemeanor was the only conviction in a high-profile investigation of the Loudoun County school system. The judge says there is evidence to charge Ziegler, but faulty jury instructions made the conviction illegitimate. The judge ordered a new trial. Now, in a statement, a spokesperson for Virginia Attorney General Jason Mieres says the dismissal of the verdict is, quote, based on a technicality. We look forward to once again presenting our case in court. A hearing for that new trial is set aside for the end of this month. That is expected to take place March 28th. In the studio, Corey James, DC News Now. Check out the newest commander, the Burgundy and Gold, signing veteran tight end Zach Ertz to a one-year deal, adding a weapon for whoever plays quarterback next year. Ertz joins Washington, entering his 12th year in the NFL. He was a three-time Pro Bowler on the Philadelphia Eagles and recently played under new commander's offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury on the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the move comes shortly after the team let go of Logan Thomas, who spent four years in Landover before being cut. Now let's talk basketball. The Washington Wizards setting yet another disappointing record, adding to a brutal season of basketball here in D.C. They lost to Orlando Magic 119 to 109 last night. 
tying a franchise record with their 16th consecutive loss. Now the Wizards are hoping to turn things around and avoid being on the wrong side of history when they play the Hornets at home tomorrow. A national rock climbing event showcasing some of the best climbers in the nation will be in Gaithersburg. DC News Now's Kevon Dupree spoke with competitors who participated in the semifinal event. Climbers from across the country are here at Sport Rock in Gaithersburg to compete for a chance to become a member of the USA Climbing National Team. Competitive rock climbing, a sport of endurance, balance, and strength. Those skills put to the test at today's lead semifinals. It was all very awkward, like nothing felt comfortable, so you never really got a chance to like think about what was happening, or maybe you had too much time to think about what was happening. The wall was a challenge for many climbers, but some were able to conquer it. I'm in first right now. I don't want to jinx anything, but I'm, I'm very happy and confident in how I did. Um, so I'm just super, super, super excited. Climbers say they embrace the competition, but the thing they enjoy most is meeting fellow competitors and cheering them on. To have everybody like kind of welcome you into this space and be psyched on like what you're doing regardless of your level. Like as long as you're trying hard and you're interested and you're excited, like people will be psyched on that. And USA Climbing National Team Head Coach Joshua Larson agrees. He says the character of people in the competitive rock climbing community is what makes the sport so special. You can go anywhere in the world and you can find a climbing gym, you can find a climbing partner, you can find a friend. I think that's the coolest part about climbing. The USA Climbing National Team Trials event will go until March 10th. Reporting in Gaithersburg, I'm Kevon Dupree, DC News Now.